Hey, people. How you doing? I know you haven't heard from me again for a while. Like a week is a while. Seems like forever if you don't hear from somebody on YouTube that you like watching. You know, they don't do a video every couple days. It's like, what happened to them? You know, where are they? Well, hell, a video every week, man. Come on. I'm running out of ideas, and I'll tell you what my biggest problem is right now. And that is it. See, they've got this stuff here in Canada. It's a hideous white stuff all over the place. And, you know, you just can't get anything done. Everything's buried or frozen. This takes the fun out of everything. So, it's a tradition here in Canada that whenever the weather's good, we pretty much work our asses off. And uh, this goes for almost all trades up here. You know, unless your shop is completely indoors and everything like that. I mean, I have a lot of work to do outside too, so I mean, it's kind of hard for me to do much of anything, but... What we do here in Canada in the trades, like the building trades and things like that, and a lot of my work is like exterior installation and things like that too, so I mean, it really limits what I can do because, you know, you get all this ice and snow and basically you're screwed. I mean, there's nothing you can do. You can't stop the weather from happening. So. What we do is we hole up in our little shops, we get liquored on a daily basis, and um, contemplate our future. That's what we do here in Canada. Uh, no secret that Canadians like their drink. Uh, I'm not, you know, I drink as heavy as anybody, but there are people that drink me under the table. I was with a couple of them there last night. Man, they could put it away. I, I drink like that, I die. But, uh, uh, you know, I grew up in Newfoundland, and um, I tell you, you want to see a bunch of drinkers, the Newfoundlanders, Newfies as we call them, they can drink. Uh, that's pretty much where I think I learned it from. Everybody up there drinks, you know, and their winters are even longer. Maybe that's why they're such big drinkers up there. But... Um, but what I was doing today here was painting this ironwork, and I uh, got it all got it all painted up there. It's hard to paint in in, uh, in my workshop here. I don't like to paint indoors, and the weather sort of limits me because I like to spray outdoors, and it's just <laughs> kind of hard to get a nice day in the middle of February to do some painting. Um, there has been the odd warm day, but you know for whatever reason it just didn't get done outdoors. <coughs> so I had to put on a big fire and spray in here. I know what you're thinking, spraying indoors is pretty dangerous with a fire. Um, this pot sprayer here is what I like to use for this stuff. It lays a pretty good heavy coat of an oil-based paint. And, uh, you know, yeah, I can tell the concentrations aren't real high in the atmosphere here. Uh, I always wear a respirator and eye protection. Uh, it's uh, where it's oil based, it's not really uh, especially uh, volatile. So, just these uh, respirator dust, these are a dust respirator here. They keep the par particles of paint out of my lungs. Um, and they have a little bit of carbon in them, so they do neutralize a little bit of vapor. Uh, but it's sort of a, you know, my thinner is just your basic paint thinner stuff like that you know so it's not uh, and where it's it doesn't this doesn't really atomize the paint it's kind of just it really pumps it on there kind of spits it on it's like almost like a sprayer you'd use to spray a house or like an interior of a home or something you know that sort of level of uh, sort of spits it so it doesn't really get all floaty in the air like that so it's the, really the only reason I can paint indoors and not get it all over you can see that uh, I mean it's not everywhere I I covered up my welders here just to, with a piece of paper, but after spraying all that, I mean, there's nothing on this paper. So, and that's only four feet away. Um, and it puts on a nice flat black coat. <coughs> I wanted to mention one thing. After my last video, there was a, I don't think he was a subscriber, but uh, he mentioned about 
when I ran the torsionator machine there that, oh, it's not traditional, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, no shit, it ain't traditional, you know? What is traditional in ironwork anymore? If you think, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, if you think you're going to make any money in a real way, you know, um, at doing traditional blacksmithing, you need to give your head a shake. Uh, it's you can you can get by. You could probably do make just enough money to uh, pay for your backyard forge as long as you're living in your mother's basement or something like that. And uh, you know maybe even buy enough groceries to keep you alive. But you'll never raise a family or or own a home or even a business or anything like that. Doing things the old way in blacksmithing. I'm sorry, it's just not possible. I think that's what this person probably fail to understand is that uh, I'm not really in this uh, I mean I am in this for the fun of it but these jobs I can't you can't do that for the fun of it I mean could you imagine trying to forge by hand <coughs> how much metal did I use in, in this it was like 240 feet of, of three quarter inch ironwork if you think you're gonna do that 14 inch wide scroll work by hand traditionally you're insane it just won't happen you know yes it can be done sure you could do it by, by hand but it'd take you a month and in the long run the actual um, consistency of your scroll work likely wouldn't even be as good because anything done in a jig is usually you know everything comes out the same um, you know and if you're trying to fit things you have to get them right because you know otherwise you're just kind of winging it but um, no, I don't know just sometimes it really burns my ass I mean go out of my way to do a lot of traditional blacksmithing and show you guys how to do stuff and then this it all it takes is one person to say something about me not doing this type of work traditionally man it burns my ass because I worked so hard at all this stuff and then somebody just wants to shoot it down because I ran a machine that I built just to do this sort of scroll work and make it in a <laughs> it's in my opinion a traditional way because it is a tradition it's uh, ornamental ironwork is traditional metalworking you know and trying real hard to do beautiful work and so I built jig basically the, re the reason the machine evolved in the first place was I built jigs that I could wrap the bars around I put it in the vise I'd wrap these bars around by hand and then I realized well if I can motorize it I'll put a gearbox on it and then I don't have to walk around the vise the, I just hold the bar and it'll just feed it through but you know these are forged points they're the, all the smaller scrolls are forged. Uh, you know, it's traditional as it's going to get, <laughs> you know, for this sort of a scale of a project. I mean, that's no small job to do. Uh, was it 30? Yeah, 36, 37 feet of this sort of ironwork. I dare anybody even attempt to do this by hand, you know and make a profit um, sure if you're doing some work like this for a government organization that loves to throw money at something or or maybe you're doing a restoration project for you know some museum or something yeah you could do it but you know if you're just selling iron work to uh, some guy down the road that wants some something beautiful for his home um, yeah, you can do small things traditionally, which, you know, when I do them small, I like to do them traditional because it looks nice. But there's so much more labor involved, you know. Like uh, when I did that bracket for the bakery there, I loved doing that by hand. I, that None of that was, that was three-quarter inch scroll work, and it was done by hand. And, uh, but there's no way you could do this stuff. <laughs> You know, each scroll is like 10 foot of bar, man. Come on. Anyway, I'm ranting now because it did kind of rub me the wrong way. But 
I don't know, I'd like to hear your opinions. And uh, I want you to remember one thing when I'm telling you all this. Uh, I named my company Modern Blacksmith. Modern, not traditional blacksmith. So, I mean, right there is your first clue that I'm going to be using modern equipment to do these things. You know, to just to come in and blast me for not doing it the old way. I mean, you obviously haven't watched all my old videos of doing things the old way, you know. So, sorry again. I mean, I had to vent, and I thought you guys ought to hear it. So, it gave me a, a, an outlet to get it off my chest and uh, speak my mind. But I want to know everybody's opinion. Um, you know, how... How do you look at a blacksmith, a modern blacksmith, um, that does things in a modern way? I honestly believe that blacksmiths of old would have given their eye teeth for any of this gear, any of it. They would have loved to have had it. Um, <coughs> you know, yes, you can do things the old way, um, but what's funny is the word traditional um, blacksmiths there's not a whole lot of tradition there I mean there's ways of doing things but a blacksmith was a was a metalworking slash mechanic tool maker guy in the old days and I mean he would make and sell anything he could if he thought you were gonna give him a dollar to do it um, I've got books that explain what blacksmiths did you know turn of the century and in the 1800s and that sort of thing and and uh, you know the facts are there. They did they did everything. They worked on carts and horses and shoot horses and worked on automobiles when they came out. You know who did you bring it to? You, there was no mechanics because there was not no such devices before you know the late 1800s. You know lots of cast pieces and things like that. They had to be mechanically joined and. You know, they drill and tap holes and bolt them together and do sorts of repairs like that on all that iron work back in the day. So, anyway, as you can tell, I'm still, it, it touched a nerve, but um, I want you guys' opinion. What do you think um, about, you know, the differences between a guy like me that does things as modern as I can possibly do them and still put out this beautiful traditional ironwork, you know, this ornamental ironwork, um, because I think it's absolutely beautiful. I have the utmost respect for the people, especially in Europe, that did all this beautiful wrought ironwork. Um, you know, if I was, again, getting back to ranting, uh, if I was truly traditional, I mean, how traditional is it to use steel? They didn't do wrought iron and steel back in the day. They used wrought iron. Um, if you don't know the difference, you know, check on Wikipedia or something. I'm sure it's on there. But what wrought iron is, is just iron that had silica in it and that allowed it to be uh, relatively malleable when hot. Um, Sometimes you see old anchors and stuff outside of, you know, in coastal areas anyway, outside of a restaurant or some fish and chips place, you'll see a big old fashioned anchor and it almost looks like it's got a wood grain to it. That's wrought iron. Um, there's, you, there's actually one place in the world, I think, that still makes it. I believe it's in England somewhere and there may be some video of it, uh, that some sort of a wrought iron rolling mill, I think is the title of it. I don't know. You guys can look for it. But they do still make traditional wrought irons very expensive. It's mostly sold to um, restoration people and things like that to repair iron work, especially in Europe, you know, because there was a lot of it there. It really didn't pick up over on this side of the world. Uh, by the time the in Industrial uh, Revolution kicked in, they had started to invent steel and uh, ornamental iron work generally kind of went out of favor anyway for cast iron. and. Um, so a lot of this forge stuff was lost um, for a long time. And then there's guys like me bringing it back, studying the lines and the shapes and things like that and trying to uh, use it the best I can. Um, I know a lot, I try to keep my designs relatively simple, but I'm not all for the uh, fleur de lis and leaf accents and those sorts of things, which, you know, I think they're beautiful, but it's just not for me. It's not my style, that's all. But, uh, yeah. Opinions. Give me your opinions right now.
I want your opinions.